Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. This will be a big one today. So everybody wants to retire. Everybody wants to be financially free. Everybody knows FOMO is here and everybody needs a piece of Bitcoin. So this video is going to do a couple of things. It's going to show you, first of all, Bitcoin, Bitcoin price prediction models and how many you need to be able to retire across a whole bunch of jurisdictions all over the world, ever from Colombia to Thailand to the United Kingdom, Singapore and everything else in between. So without further ado, let's jump in. Again, this is a theoretical study. I will explain all of the assumptions as I go through, but without any further ado, let's jump in. Disclaimer, uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. Do not take this as financial advice. Second of all, it is extremely numbers driven. So I can't tell you the thousands and thousands of spreadsheets behind this, but uh, it, you'll see. It'll make sense in a minute, hopefully. Uh, just real quick as well for everybody. I want to thank everybody for all the support, new subscribers. I have had over 10,000 subscribers in the last week. I've gone from 18,000 to 28,000. So things are really picking up. You guys are liking the content and appreciate all the love, all the comments, all the thumbs up. Uh, it's really good. So thank you, everybody. Now, let's jump into the details. So first of all, it's very important to talk about Bitcoin supply. Now, if we look at the world, again, these are my numbers, my analysis. You will not find this anywhere else. Hopefully one day people will wake up and put two and two together. But if you analyze these numbers carefully, you're going to see a couple of things. First of all, 18.6 million coins have been mined to date. Treasuries. The number of treasuries has actually doubled since I last put this analysis together. And now it, treasuries make up about 6.8% of all Bitcoin. Satoshi lockup, 5.6%, it's about 1.04 million coins. Lost coins, by my estimations, are about 4.03 million coins. And people are losing coins every single day. So that makes the supply even less. And hodlers and cold storage, the people that are buying crypto and locking it away, taking it off exchanges, I estimate that's about 9.1 million coins right now. So that leaves the world fighting over 3.1 million coins. Now think about that. 3.1 million coins. Less than, I think, 4% of millionaires actually own Bitcoin today. And there are 50 million millionaires. So looking into that number again one more time, you will see that 90, 94% of the world's 50 million millionaires can't even be whole coiners. They can't even get a whole coin. There simply aren't enough. So totally fascinating. Let's go a little bit deeper, as we always do. I touched on this in another video recently, but I just want to summarize again, because this is very important to the whole journey that we're going on today. Less than 100,000 people own 10 or more Bitcoins. Think about that. So if you are a whole coiner, you're in very rarefied air. 94% of the world's millionaires will not be whole coiners. I just covered that in the previous slide. And you only need 0.24 of a Bitcoin to be in the top 1% of all Bitcoin owners. And the other thing is really interesting per my calculations. A lot of people, if you look at the range there, 10 to 100 Bitcoin holders, I have estimated that every day so far this year, 700 new millionaires were minted every day because of Bitcoin wealth. Think about that. That is the power of Bitcoin. 700 new millionaires a day. And imagine if this continues. The existing 50 million millionaires on the world, there will be more millionaires, but they'll be different. They'll be newly minted ones because of crypto. So quick bit of fun ranking here. Where do you fit? So here is, uh, you've probably seen this before. I've spoken about it before. I think I've had it in presentations. But a shrimp is somebody with less than one Bitcoin. Everybody wants to be a crab in that one to 10 Bitcoin area. Octopus is 10 to 50. Fish, 50 to 100. Dolphin, 100 to 500. Shark, 500 to 1,000. Whale, 1,000 to 5,000. And you've got your humpback whales, 5,000 or more. So you've got firms like Tesla and MicroStrategy and all these other big companies now that are all humpback whales. So the big guys, the big treasuries, the big high net worth individuals, the big money center banks are coming in. So when I hear of people getting stopped out of Bitcoin or selling, I'm like, mm, face palm, don't do it. Hold on with those diamond hands. Have to use that Wall Street bets analogy. So I'm going to talk for a second about the power of compounding and why this is important. Because again, 
This is all part of the story I'm telling today. So if you imagine $100 compounded at 10% and 20% per year, you can see the difference over 20 years. It is massive. So if you invested $100 at 10% compound interest, you'd have about $620 at the end of that period. If you invested at 20%, you will have over $4,500. So what would you prefer, 625 or 4,500? Again, where you put your money is important. And the longer you keep it in a place that has generates very good returns is very important. So I hope that sinks in. Another way to look at this information is look at Bitcoin returns compared to the biggest returning equities and assets in the history of the world. Amazon is number two. If you had invested $100 at the very beginning of Amazon, you'd have about Three and a half thousand today, three thousand three hundred. Now, if you invested one hundred dollars in Bitcoin, you'd have over nine million dollars. Think about that. But you see some other names in there that you recognize: J.P. Morgan, Facebook, Apple, all big names. But Bitcoin is far, far outperforming them. And remember, that was a log scale, not a linear scale. If it's linear, you wouldn't even be able to see the Facebooks and the Visas and the Amazons and everything else. Okay, bear with me. A little bit more on numbers. So if you had invested $100 10 years ago into Bitcoin, the total return is 5.5 million percent, and the annualized return of that is 296 percent. And that's important for compounding. So if you put $100 aside and you're earning 300 percent per year over 10 years, that becomes five million dollars that's the power of compounding that's why i'm hammering this home because it's very important to bitcoin as well because of the parabolic rise that it's undertaking now adjusting that for inflation and again here i am talking about inflation it's less your returns are only 191 percent instead of 296 percent and your ending value is about 4.4 million instead of 5.2 million and the reason that is important is because even if bitcoin sits still inflation will actually drive price increases. It'll become the more sought after asset and your purchasing power of your dollar will become less. Therefore, it'll take more dollars to buy Bitcoin anyway. So just let that sink in for a second. I hope people can wrap their heads around after watching a few of my videos. You'll see I'm very big on things like inflation and money supply. Okay, now let's look a little bit uh, at this very famous quote. History does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme by Mark Twain. And the reason I'm showing that is because maybe history doesn't repeat itself, but maybe it sort of does. So if you analyze the Bitcoin, to create a Bitcoin forecast based on gains from the first six weeks of 2021, it made 68% gains just in the first six weeks. And if you assume Bitcoin can make 68% gains per year over the next 10 years, the $50,000 coin would go to 5.3 million. And of course, that's not going to happen. But I just want to illustrate the power of compound interest to you all so you can understand exactly how it is. And the gains for Bitcoin so far this year have been incredible. But let's take historic gains. And if you look at the average annualized gains adjusted for inflation is 191%. And you take that and multiply it by 50,000 today, Bitcoin could go to $748 million in 2030. So... It's for illustration purposes only. That's what happened over the past 10 years. I'm not saying it's going to happen over the next 10 years, but some of the numbers you'll see next will may seem a little bit unbelievable. But anyway, let's continue on. So this is what I call the Bitcoin accumulation checklist. For those that don't have any Bitcoin, I want to make sure you get it. And I'll walk through each of these individually next. But buy $63 worth of Bitcoin to get above the median of all global Bitcoin holders. Okay, there's limited supply. So jump in now and you're guaranteed to have more than the median of any other Bitcoin holder. Calculate your net worth. Use my Bitcoin insurance model to calculate your Bitcoin insurance. I'll walk to that as well. Get above the median ownership. Get above median ownership of Bitcoin. So that means you need to own more than 0 0.037 Bitcoin, costing you today about $1,800. Get into the 1% club, which means owning more than 0.24 Bitcoin to own more than 99% of all other Bitcoin owners. It's like a food chain. We're going up, 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 up. And then allocate what you can, when you can, and dollar cost average into it, because the future is very good for the next 10 years. This is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So let's look at what each one of these means. 
more than the average person. Again, 14 million coins. You saw where that number came from in a previous slide. Population, 7.6 billion. That is the average Bitcoin per person of 0 0.0018. Having more than the average person today means you've got to spend $90. Okay, and assuming the price of 50,000 per Bitcoin today. Medium Bitcoin ownership today is about $1,300 from 25 million people means you need to own more than 0 0.037 Bitcoin. The Bitcoin insurance update, if you've seen my videos in the past, you've seen this before, wherever you fall on the net worth scale, if you have a net worth of $100,000 or half a million dollars or a million dollars or $10 million, this is the minimum you need to own today. So if you have $100,000 net worth, I urge you to go out and buy $175 worth. Do it on PayPal, do it wherever. Just get on the train, figure out an easy on-ramp. If you're worth 10 million, you should have at least a third of a Bitcoin. And if you're Elon Musk, you need to have about 6,400 Bitcoins, but that's a separate issue. He's the richest man in the world, of course. And to be in the 1% club, you need to own 0.24 Bitcoin. So let's jump into detailed price prediction models. I looked at 42 different analyst price predictions I map them out in a chart and create a logarithmic scale, which is the orange line. And then I map that to prices by year. And for the totally crazy price estimations that are out there, I didn't include them in this, but I took really top-notch analyst information. And what I was able to arrive at is certain prices. So for this study, by the year 2030, based on all the analyst price predictions and my modification, I believe Bitcoin could be at $551,985. Now, if you asked me during the summer of 2020 what I thought, I would have guaranteed you with 99.9% .9 surety, Bitcoin would have been $113,000. But it's just moved so far, so fast, it's even blown me away. So now my new ranking by 2030 is $551,985. And you'll see why that's important later. Global Bitcoin retirement plans. Let's do some number crunching and get into the really fun stuff here because at least a lot of people that follow this channel that are very interested in financial freedom. So the assumptions behind my calculations, I assume, based on the country, two times average local monthly income modified by a cost of living index using US salary as a base modifier for the cost of living index, and of course, a purchasing power index to make sure you can buy what you need for wherever you're from. Also, a quick note regarding bull cycles. A lot of people always ask, well, what happens if you have a bear cycle? Won't the price of Bitcoin fall? So my assumption for this is bull cycles will even out over the next 10 years. I assume inflation will be at 3%. And Bitcoin appreciation is assumed 5% after 2030. So still a conservative appreciation there of Bitcoin after the year 2030. The inflation assumed of 3% is because I'm looking at all countries around the world and taking an average. If you're in the US or parts of Europe, you can assume inflation would be a lot higher, more like 7%. And taxes are not accounted for because I assume that people will be able to figure out a tax-free status over the next 10 years or find some ways to manage taxes into some type of retirement account. Okay, we're going to start very first with the most expensive place in the world, the Cayman Islands, and assuming you need $7,300 a month to spend to maintain an okay standard of living and retire. Again, I, I hear sometimes here complaints like 7,000 is too much or 7,000 is too little. Again, this is based on my formula. It's based on average multipliers of so salaries and purchasing power and everything else on the island. And I know it's a very expensive place, but I do think you can survive on 7300 bucks a month. And of course, that has to increase for inflation every year. And that's all taken into account in this model, as well as the Bitcoin appreciation after the year 2030 of 5%. So per this model, you will need to retire for 24, 25 years, about $2.4 million. Now, I have three different Bitcoin price models assumed in this model. One is what I call my sandbag, which is my super conservative price estimate of Bitcoin by the year 2030 of 331,000. My model, which is 551,985. Then the excessive model, which is 986,000. The excessive model is what is assumed um, by some analysts of 
saying it'll be a million, 1.5 million, etc. Some are even saying a lot more than that. But I kind of put a whole bunch together and came up, up with uh, what I call an excessive estimate of, which is basically nearly a million dollars. I don't believe it'll go that high by 2030, but I think 551 is definitely on the cards for sure. Now, the average of all of these three, if you want to take a conservative average of my sandbag, my model, and the excessive estimate, you can assume it'll be 623. So whichever model you decide to go with, if you want to be ultra conservative, you will need four Bitcoins for, <laughs> to be able to retire by the year 2030 in the Cayman Islands. If you want to use my model, it's 2.4 Bitcoins, the excessive model, 1.3 Bitcoins, and the average is 2.14. So if you want to be super conservative, but a little bit aggressive, you can decide which flavor you want to take. Hope all that's clear. And let's jump ahead and go to the second country. And by the way, I read all the comments. I took all your information. I did the same thing for Ethereum, different kind of flavor. But uh, a lot of people were, their countries weren't represented as they're now included in this analysis. So United States, what it takes to retire, you're going to need five and a half thousand a month. And this, this does not mean you live in Manhattan or San Francisco or Chicago. But on average, again, same thing. Net, net money to the bank every month to be able to live accounted for Bitcoin appreciation and inflation. And your total spend over 24, 25 years, about $1.8 million. The Bitcoin you need, sandbag model, is three Bitcoins in the US. 1.8 per my valuation. And the excessive model, 1.01 Bitcoins and an average of about 1.6 Bitcoins. Australia, same thing. Sandbag, 2.87 uh, which will allow you to spend 5229 a month. And remember, this is not Sydney. This may not be Melbourne. This is kind of some cheaper jurisdictions in Australia. It's basically in, in the average cost of living. My model, 1.72 Bitcoins, excessive just under a Bitcoin, and the average is 1.53 Bitcoins. United Kingdom, you need $4,500 a month. Now remember, this everything is denominated in US dollars, not pound sterling or anything else for simplicity, or else it gets way too complicated. But you will see here, in the UK, you will need two and a half Bitcoin per the sandbag model, one and a half per mine, and uh, excess model 0.84. In fact, a lot of people believe that Brexit could be bad for the pound over time. So that will have an impact on the amount of Bitcoin you need. On average, call it one and a half Bitcoins in the UK. Portugal, my model, 1.3 Bitcoins. Sandbag, 2.18. And of course, the excessive 0.03. So you need at least uh, just over a Bitcoin to be able to spend maybe 4,000 a month in Portugal. Panama, 1.8, 1.6, and on average one Bitcoin again to spend 3,200 a month. Costa Rica, 3,500 a month. Again, two Bitcoins per the sandbag model and the average of one Bitcoin. So you guys get the idea as we go through. Singapore, one of the requested countries, a little bit more expensive. But depending on how you can manage your cost, the sandbag model is over three Bitcoins. And that'll help you be able to spend about five and a half thousand dollars a year. My model, 1.83 Bitcoins, excessive one Bitcoin, an average about 1.6 Bitcoins. Mexico, 2300 a month. Again, sandbag 1.27, my model 0.76 Bitcoins, excessive under a half a Bitcoin and average about 0.7 Bitcoins to spend that 2300 a month. Colombia, $1,700 a month to live well there. You will need uh, at least one Bitcoin per the sandbag model, and my model about 0.56 Bitcoins. And on average, half a Bitcoin should be able to set you up in 10 years in Colombia. Indonesia, same thing, half a Bitcoin on average should be able to set you up by using my sandbag model. Having one Bitcoin will help you live very comfortably in Indonesia. Thailand, another very requested place from you guys. So um, in Thailand, you can live well for about $2,200 a month. Again, modified for inflation, etc. That means sandbag model, you need 1.21 Bitcoins and on average about 0.64 Bitcoins. So after all that, let's jump into the conclusions. So the question I get is how far will one Bitcoin take me in 2030? So based on the average of the three different price prediction models I have, it could be worth $623,000. So fast forward 10 years, one Bitcoin could be worth 623K. Now, quick warning. Again, this is theoretical. This is not investment advice. And Peter Schiff, I know he probably has a lot of fans on this channel. 
he's kind of he's kind of weird. He's he's coming around. He said, now that Bitcoin has hit fifty thousand dollars, I must admit a move to a hundred thousand can't be ruled out. So that's some inkling of optimism from the man who is normally very very negative. However, he said it could go to zero. Um, so basically, I want everybody to know nothing is for sure in this life. There are no guarantees except for death and taxes, as they say. Okay, risk factors. What could happen as well? What could hurt Bitcoin? Bitcoin could go to zero per Peter Schiff. Your Bitcoin could get confiscated. It could be banned if you live in India. It could incur special taxes like the unrealized capital gains. There could be a double spend problem. There could be a quantum computer hack or there could be theft or you could be careless and lose your own Bitcoin. So please be aware of all the risks. And a big part of this channel is to help you manage those risks and be aware of the risks so you can prevent them from ever occurring. Now let's go to my conclusion, three-part conclusion. First one is, will Bitcoin survive? And the answer is yes, in my opinion. The Bitcoin network protocol is a miraculous piece of code and encryption. And uh, it, it's just the deeper you get in, the more amazed you become. Second, there are threats such as government bans, but they're extremely hard to enforce. We're already seeing that happen now in Nigeria. And then other risks like quantum computing hacks, etc., could happen, but that's 10 years away, as I covered in a previous video. And I believe the network protocol will be robustified using quantum proof encryption over the next couple of years. At least, well, there's an eight or one way to solve that problem. Conclusion number two. Bitcoin supply is simply so scarce and the only way is up. When I first came across Bitcoin and dug into it and I discovered it was massively scarce, I got really, really, really excited. And also, even in bear markets, I think the impact of the halving, or the halving, as some people say, is lessening. So don't be freaked out about the bear markets of the past and the future, just like people were freaked out about Chinese New Year had no impact, as I said it would. Just like people are freaked out about Ethereum CME options, no impact. Again, all goodness, so don't worry too much about that stuff. Conclusion part three, I love this quote from Scaramucci. It must be a picture of him from 20 years ago. But if you're not long Bitcoin, you are short Bitcoin. Let that sink in. It makes a lot of sense when you think about it. And it's a brilliant quote, and I might use it again. Mooch, hope it's okay I use that. Patreon, love the community. If you want to unlock more stuff from inside my head, uh, jump on in there. The community is growing and everybody's really wonderful and super helpful to each other. So a big thank you to Patreon. Big thank you as well to all the new subscribers, people watching this. If you like the content, thumbs up. Ring the bell for notifications of more content and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm active in the comments. I'm always a black bubble. Be careful. They're tricking people all the time. Do not give anybody any information. Do not call anybody. Do not email anybody. Do not telegram anybody. Just chat with me. I'll never ask you for anything. Thanks all. Appreciate the time.